What if I told you that the future of Tesla doesn't lie in cyber trucks or robo taxis or selling 20 million Model Ys? The secret to the company's success is actually going to come from the most simple of all their products, the Mega Pack. The Tesla Mega Pack is essentially just a really big metal box full of batteries, a couple of power inverters, and a system to prevent it all from spontaneously combusting. That's about all there is to it. You fill the box up with energy when you have lots to go around, and then you take the energy back when you need it. And Tesla has been selling these battery boxes for around three years now, mostly unnoticed by the majority of people. Even industry insiders will often gloss over Tesla's mega pack business entirely in favor of keeping the conversation pointed at vehicle delivery numbers and selling prices. So, when most observers hear that Tesla has cut the price of their best-selling Model Y by 20%, they instantly jump to the conclusion that the company must be in total shambles and profits are bound to fall. While those of us who have been paying closer attention would know that the price of a car is fairly negligible in the big picture compared to the business that Tesla is building around the Mega Pack, one single simple product that has the potential to be just as profitable as Tesla's entire vehicle catalog combined, if not more so. Let's talk about how the Mega Pack is going to revolutionize Tesla in 2023. The primary reason to be so bullish on the Mega Pack going into 2023 is thanks to a complete redesign of the product specifications, pricing structure, and manufacturing process. In the three years previous, Tesla had been building Mega Packs out of their Nevada Gigafactory, the same location where they produce battery cells and modules along with their drive units for all of Tesla's Made in America vehicles. The energy storage division occupied its own little corner of the warehouse, and the deal was always that any battery cells left over after the vehicle packs were complete would be thrown into the storage products. So from 2019 until 2022, the Mega Pack used the same 2170 sized Panasonic nickel, cobalt, and manganese battery cell, which is a fantastic battery for a high performance electric vehicle like a Model 3 and Model Y. But for a box of batteries that just sits there and stores energy, this is entirely overkill and has prevented Tesla's energy storage division from ever turning a meaningful profit. For most of 2022, the energy division posted gross margins of about 5-10%. to So they have been making money, but not much, not enough. Over at Tesla's vehicle division, gross profit margins have been sitting around 30%, give or take, which is a fantastic return. That leads the automotive industry by leaps and bounds. But Elon Musk has even higher hopes for Tesla Energy, anticipating that gross margin on storage products can reach as high as 65%. So there is a big change that needs to come to live up to Elon's expectations. How do we get there from here? A key indicator that Tesla is making energy storage a main priority is the construction of their new mega factory in Lathrop, California, an entire factory dedicated to production of the Mega Pack. But the product coming out of the new mega factory, which came online in late 2022, is entirely different from what has been on the market previously. So we can focus on three main factors. Thing number one, the Mega Factory has a new battery supply chain with a very specific battery chemistry. So instead of siphoning off high performance nickel based cells from Giga Nevada, the Mega Pack Factory is specifically importing cells from the Chinese company CATL, aka the largest battery maker in the world. And Tesla has chosen a very specific battery chemistry called LFP which replaces the expensive and elusive nickel, cobalt, and manganese ingredients with plain old iron. Same stuff that your dad's frying pan is made of goes into the battery cell and it works just fine. LFP is not a suitable chemistry for trying to make a car like the Model S Plaid because those exotic metals are necessary for high energy density and power output. But again, 
When we're just talking about a giant box that just stores energy and doesn't go anywhere, LFP is a great solution. It also offers some advantages that are unique to iron-based battery cells. You can charge an LFP battery up to 100% capacity without causing any degradation in the chemistry. And that chemistry will also stand up to an incredibly high volume of charge and discharge cycles. You can easily get 5,000 full cycles before seeing any significant loss in battery capacity, which would be 11 years worth of use if the Mega Pack were fully charged and discharged every single day, which would never be the case. So these are built to last. They're also built to be cost effective. Due to the abundant iron cathode material, the LFP batteries are going to represent up to a 30% cost reduction per kilowatt of battery capacity. And more importantly, the supply of these batteries is much more abundant. Thing number two is manufacturing volume. At Giga Nevada, Mega Pack production seemed to cap out at around 4 gigawatt hours per year, which is a lot of batteries, but that has led to a waiting list for Mega Pack deliveries that now stretches into at least the third quarter of 2024. So clearly, there is demand enough to support a massive increase in volume production. That's where the Mega Factory shines. Once this production line gets up to full speed, there will be 40 gigawatt hours worth of Mega Pack units rolling out per year. And we know that a higher total production volume equals a lower overhead cost per unit. It's more difficult to put a number on that, but it is another cost saving baked in on top of the reduced materials cost. Thing number three is pricing. Tesla has ramped up the price of their new Mega Pack unit very aggressively. One year ago, the cost per Mega Pack would run around $1 million, or more specifically, $461 per kilowatt hour of storage capacity. The last price update that we saw on the Mega Pack, which was December of 2022, the price had increased to about $2.6 million, or more importantly, now $615 per kilowatt hour. So that's a 33% increase per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. And if we remember back to thing one, Tesla has also achieved up to a 30% reduction in battery cost per kilowatt hour. And don't forget thing two, which was the increased efficiency and lowered overhead of high volume manufacturing. Clearly, we are no longer talking about a 5% gross profit margin on energy storage. That number is going to explode. We won't see the full effect make its way to the Tesla balance sheet for a few quarters, that's probably a year or more away, but this change has been baked into every new Mega Pack order placed since the fourth quarter of 2022. So that's why for those of us who have been following the Tesla energy story, we're not really going to be phased by news that the price of a Model Y is going down by 20% because that's such a negligible amount of money compared to the value that is being created in energy storage products alone right now. It's like Tesla cuts the price of a $60,000 car by 20% and the headlines explode, but they increase the price of a multi-million dollar box by 30% and no one even bats an eye. Shows you how disproportionate the media's priorities are. Now, it's important we start putting all of this in perspective, so let's take a step back and look at how supply and demand has been affecting Tesla's pricing model. Sure, the price of a Model Y just came down by 20%, but if we pull back a little bit, we can see that all the company has done is to get the price back to where it started in 2020, before all of the supply chain madness gripped the world. Elon was always pretty transparent in saying that he would only ever increase the price if he had no other choice. So when the company was met with an increase in material cost, a decrease in material availability, and a steady increase in consumer demand, something has to change in order to maintain a reasonable balance. In this case, price goes up, demand goes down, chaos abides. And then Elon said he would bring that price back down again as soon as possible. So inflation begins to subside, supply chains open back up, the consumer market is diluted by a wider range of electric vehicle offerings, the price can come back down to stimulate demand while maintaining balance with supply. It's a beautiful dance. 
if we try and visualize where the mega pack is on that supply and demand curve, the demand hasn't even begun yet. So Tesla energy is kind of in the same place right now as Tesla vehicles were back when they first launched in 2012. They have a product that no one else in the market can compete with. They have a limited production capacity and they have an abundance of early adopters with deep pockets who are willing to pay any amount to get their hands on this new technology. And from there, the demand just grows exponentially from building 1,000 cars per year to building 1 million cars per year. The energy storage market is poised to do the exact same thing. According to a report by the Energy Information Administration, a part of the US Department of Energy, the United States currently has around 8 gigawatts of installed battery energy storage. The department expects this number will expand to just over 30 gigawatts by 2025. That's more than triple the demand in just two years of time. And to meet its existing climate goals, the US is going to require 100 gigawatts of energy storage by 2030. And the US government itself is helping to stimulate that growth by writing in an additional tax credit to the Inflation Reduction Act coming into effect this year. Renewable energy developers will be able to claim a 30% tax credit on all new energy storage projects. So this basically just balances back out the 30% price increase from Tesla, keeping the real cost of a mega pack essentially right back where it was in 2020. So maybe you're starting to feel the potential here. Just the domestic US demand alone for energy storage will be enough to cap out the entire production capacity of that mega factory before the end of this decade. That's 40 gigawatts, which is 40 million kilowatts, which at the going rate of $615 per kilowatt is about $25 billion per year in revenue, which is crazy. But when we remember Elon's fantasy about hitting a 65% profit margin, even if they can get close to that number, we're talking about something that will vastly overtake Tesla's vehicle operations. We'd be looking at a multi-trillion dollar company by 2030 on that alone. And when you throw in autonomous vehicles and Tesla bots and all the rest, it gets a little scary. Now, is that all overly optimistic? Maybe. But it's also not anything too far-fetched. We're literally just taking the numbers as they stand today and projecting that out over the next few years. So there's not really any trickery involved here unless we've missed something. So let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.